Hi Libra Sun and Rising, welcome to your July 2024 Astro Update. It's Raina here. I've been explaining the noise in the background. Somebody said it sounds like a rain stick and I, I still don't know what those are, but you know, if you listen to ambient music, I, I, I know what the sound is like. Those are actually cicadas and I, and I live outside of Chicago where they are, uh, <laughs> two different broods have invaded uh, which is a once in every 200 year event. So um, they're all over the place. And I, I was screaming outside. I'm not afraid of them, but um, you know, they're pretty big. And like when they go on your, in your hair or down your shirt, you know, the nape of your neck, it's a little bit um, creepy. So <laughs> I've screamed a few times outside and this lady looked at me like I was crazy. Um, so anyway, um, this uh, this July forecast, um, the significance or the the big uh, brouhaha, no, that's brouhaha is something that's bad, I guess. Um, one of the astral events of July is the blue moon in Capricorn. And Capricorn is a cardinal sign like you. So it's going to hit an angular house, namely the fourth house of home and family for you. And this is a big deal because um, you had Pluto running through there for years and you're going to get a, a, a little bit of a, uh, uh, I was going to say, a return of that in um, September, like for a couple of months. And I don't know the exact degree it's going to go back to but it's going to be around that 29 degree it might be like 28 degrees last year when it when uh, Pluto retrograded back into Capricorn and went to 27 degrees so it's all in the same ballpark so if you think back to last uh, year last autumn in the northern hemisphere you can get a feel for how this might affect you with the same um energy, although it's a little bit different because there's, there are different planets that are uh, engaged here. There's, this is the moon, and the moon has, you know, it's so fast moving that it's not going to be hanging around the way that um, Pluto um, was even in its retrograde period for a couple of months. That's a lot longer than a couple of days. So, um, and uh, by the way, this is a general forecast, so it's not going to affect everybody in the same way. Where, I mean, in terms of dates, so just keep that in mind as well. So as the month begins, the sun is in Cancer, and for you, that's the 10th house of career. And you may find every year that in, in this time of late June, and you could even say going into August, depending on personal planets that might be in cancer that you have career matters come up um, especially since the new moon is going to be involved that there are developments there's movement um, so the at the beginning of the month the sun and mercury are both in this 10th house and this is also this could be that you're just very involved with career matters. Maybe you're very ambitious. Um, but on the second, Mercury goes into that third house. I mean, third house, <laughs> 11th house. And that is the area of friendships, groups, so it's social, but also um, your own long range goals, which are labeled hopes and wishes. Pretty strange because. Um, Hopes and wishes don't seem like long-range goals to me. They seem like dreams that we kind of expect to drop in our lap. But um, I kind of like thinking of them as long-term goals better because it's more proactive that way. Um, and so you could just, I mean, it could be as simple as communicating with friends more than normal or... Um, 11th house can be, I always thought that the 11th house was the internet. The third house is considered social media and the internet in general. And uh, 
this is, I call this area, uh, especially when Mars goes through here, is like social justice warrior energy. And I, I think of Libra, Librans as social justice warriors more times than not. So you might be involved in a group that has some kind of political bent or humanitarian bent, and you're speaking your mind, speaking out against something. Um, and that's on the second. On the same day, Neptune is going retrograde at 29 degrees, 56 minutes of Pisces. And so it almost made it to Aries, but that's not actually happening until next March. And so, um, and that's your opposite sign. So you're going to have Neptune in that um, seventh house starting next March in the house that you rule, but it's in the, still in the sixth house. And so when it's retrograding, there could be a reality check. There could be something that you were idealistic about, but maybe overly idealistic and something reveals itself that is kind of a little bit, um, disappointing, disillusioning, but not necessarily the end of the world. Uh, doesn't mean that you're going to abandon whatever that thing is. And maybe you see it in a more realistic light. Could be that there was some kind of deception involved, that somebody else misrepresented it. So an example is um, some kind of a job. Um, this might have been like if you had a new job back in March or whenever that new, maybe February, late February, whenever that new moon was in Pisces and, and you started some new job and it's turned out to be different than you were um, told it was going to be, then there could be some um, disappointment and you can realize that you were bamboozled, but, um, you know, that doesn't mean that you're not going to do it. Also, uh, Neptune has been hanging out in this area for 13 years now, I guess, since 2011. So, I mean, but it's important to note that this is a general reading and when it entered your sixth house is going to vary from person to person. So um, this could have influenced some of you to go into the healing arts or even art, like fine art. And maybe you had this overly idealistic view of what it would take or you know what was possible maybe it's taking longer to gain traction or it's just something isn't quite as it seemed and you're getting this reality check that doesn't mean you're going to abandon it but you're going to be able to come at it with more realism so that you can be grounded and able to um you know, progress in a more um, clear-eyed way, I guess I would call it. If you had some kind of health issue that was very mysterious, you may find out a diagnosis, you know, from some kind of a professional, find out what is going on. Um, on the 5th, there's a new moon at 14 degrees of Cancer, Again, that's your 10th house of career, and that can be new developments with career matters. With that Neptune retrograde, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some, and in your house of work, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some connection there with that. Um, on the 11th, Venus goes into Leo, and this is a friendly angle called the sextile, and this is your 11th house well i already talked about mercury being there now we have venus so it could even be you know with venus there that you meet uh, somebody you know venus is your ruler that you meet somebody romantically through friends that you've been um associating with this could be a more social time for you in july and uh, Venus can make you popular in the 11th house. Venus, or I'm sorry, the 11th house is also the house of gains. So this can be good for um, your earnings increasing because, because um, Venus rules the second house of earned income. 
So um, that's another planet that I guess has been in Cancer from June is Venus in your 10th house of career. So maybe you get that raise or what have you. Or if you, if you are um, owning a business that you see an increase in your profits. On the 20th, Mars goes into Gemini. This is the first time that this has happened um, in over a year. And of course, at that time, Mars had uh, stayed in Gemini for seven months. This is a fellow air sign, so it forms um, a very harmonious aspect called the trine. And this is coming from your ninth house and Mars. Uh, oh, it's interesting about the ninth house because your house, you're, you ruled the seventh house and um, the ninth house, both of these houses are both connected to the law. The ninth house to me is the law itself. So, you know, because this is also the house of God or to me, organized religion, and they have their own laws. Um, you know, in in the um, the Torah, uh, I'm not Jewish, but I, I heard that, that the um, Ten Commandments are just the first ten, that there's actually 413 or something. There's like a, a all these commandments and these rules and uh, you know when even when people are citing chapter and verse of the bible i often think of lawyers like they're kind of making this case you know so and that's what it has in common so i think of the the ninth house as the law itself and the seventh house as courtroom action you know like legal matters um and libra individuals are so drawn to the law whether it's as a lawyer or paralegal or Maybe in some cases, a court reporter, I guess. So, um, but the, but the ninth house is also the house of long distance travel and Mars can give you uh, wanderlust. So you may be, um, you know, traveling to a foreign country in the latter part of July. Um, it's also the house of academia so sometimes you know mars can be about conflict so any kind of arguments with a university or you know or ambition like you're trying to get tenure if you are an adjunct professor or something like that on the the very next day this is that blue moon and it's at 29 degrees of capricorn in your fourth house of home and family, this is the second full moon in the in the month of um, it, within that thirty day period. So it's a blue moon. The first one is at one degree. I'm saying is going to be, not was, because as I record this, it's coming up in the following week, and some of you will be listening before that full moon. That will be at one degree of Capricorn. And there is every chance that that one will actually not be in the same house, that it will actually be in the third house for you. Again, you know, you have to consult your individual charts to see exactly where it's going to fall. Um, but you may have done this kind of shadow work with Pluto here, but there might still be things, I well, I think there will be still things that, that you need to work within yourself because of that Pluto retrograde that will be, um, like I said, around this 29 degree mark, um, very close to it when it retrogrades. And so um, excavation, purging of old patterns and the, you know, bringing up of um, memories or could be secrets that have something to do with the family of origin and even just like ancestral karma that kind of thing you know seeing it for what it is i i feel like libra is one of those signs that this is very um threatening to a lot of libra people and and if your son is in libra and you're listening to this if you have the moon in scorpio you have mercury 
or, or Mercury or Mars and Scorpio, it may be mitigated a little bit because you're more acclimated and that you actually enjoy kind of probing into your own psyche or other people's psyches. Um, but for other Libra individuals, it can feel uncomfortable because there may be things that trigger anger and the, the more difficult emotions that, um, you know, the past can bring and being able to, to accept that, that it's part of you, but it doesn't define you and it doesn't, you know, you don't have to feel guilty about it is a challenge for sure. Um, but it can, it can, it can help to, to heal the, you know, something that, um, comes up for you that maybe you were kind of interacting with that in subconscious level. The next day on the 22nd, the sun goes into Leo, uh, a friendly, I keep saying this, I say friendly angle, it's a sex style, the same house, the uh, 11th house. Yeah, I think that this, you're going to be um, more social at this time. Maybe you were kind of absorbed with career matters and now you're kind of like chilling out a little bit and three days later mercury goes into virgo and that is your 12th house and when the 12th house um transits start coming in this is a time of hibernation for you before you make your debut and what a debut that you will make because um uh, you'll have a new moon in Octo in early October, and that's going to be an, actually a, a solar eclipse. So you're going to really, um, you, you're in the midst of a lot of change at the moment, Libra, um, not only with your eclipses, but your opposite sign of Aries. So um, in the 12th house, this makes you less in need of logic and more relying on intuition to guide you and that can be very helpful your dream state may be very active also all right that's what i have for you i hope that this resonated if you would like a private reading i'm promoting my deep dive readings and my uh, other package deals i i, I don't want to go too into that because you can just um, click on the link below to, to learn more details. But um, my deep dive readings are an hour of natal chart analysis, an hour of transits for a special price. I have one with the tarot as well called the whole enchilada. And there's one that is just one reading and, uh, and the tarot for people who like, that's a combo platter. So I have like, those are like discounted readings because you're buying two or three together at once. And, um, you know, I do have other topics like love and um, career life path type of readings. You can find out more information at the link below. Thanks for listening. Bye.